All right. Welcome back. This is the start of week four, and this is CS50. And this is an actual receipt uh, that floated around online after someone photographed it. It perhaps speaks to what goes wrong when you have the problem of floating point imprecision,、um, particularly bad if it's a cash register.、Uh, this is, just to zoom in, this is the、uh, receipt. From a restaurant. And again, things should probably not cost 1.48999 cents, probably unintentional. But computers make mistakes, and apparently people buy computers with mistakes. So,、um, looking ahead to this week, so problem set three. Introduces you to this、uh, sort of age old game of the game of 15, whereby you've got a little board like this, and the goal is to move the puzzle pieces up, down, left, to right, so that you order them ultimately from top to bottom 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 15, with a blank in the bottom right hand corner. So the problem set this week introduces you to, for the first time, to something we'll call distribution code, distro code, something that someone else wrote. In this case, it's code written by us, but we stopped short of implementing this whole game, and rather we left Blanks, little holes for you to fill in throughout the framework so that the goal of this game is really twofold so far as the P set goes. One is understanding someone else's code, so not diving in with a blank slate and figuring out how to implement the whole thing from scratch, but rather understanding how a framework works that we provide. And you'll see it's all nicely commented and indented, and we then direct you toward the holes you need to fill in. With code of your own. Now, those of you enticed with the Tacker edition will know that the goal is not to implement the game per se, but a solver for the game. So that if you actually play this thing, rather than be the human typing in the number three and four and 15 to move the puzzle pieces around, instead you will type G O D in all caps, and voila, the computer will solve this problem for you. And it's quite fun to see it happen live animatedly. So you can play with the Hacker edition, even if you're doing standard, in the appliance because we've included the Solutions to both、uh, in CS50 zone directory. So, also as part of this problem set is an opportunity to dabble with a couple of sorts and searches. So, you'll be asked to implement essentially、uh, binary search. And we talked about binary search. We looked at Sean's implementation of binary search on video last week. And there's a couple of ways you can implement it. Do look back at the walkthrough from yesterday on video if you've not already, if you need some guidance there. And then you're asked to implement sort. Because again, this notion of sorting elements is what ultimately empowers. Someone like us on stage to find numbers more efficiently, more quickly. We were able to find Mike Smith in the phone book some four weeks ago because the thing was sorted. But that begs the question how expensive, how time consuming is it to sort? And so we looked at bubble sort and selection sort. And unfortunately, those weren't the fastest players out there. They were in what we call big O of n squared, since they might take n times n steps, but they did get the job done. Now, those of you interested in the hacker edition also need to implement sort, but you Need to do it in big O of n linear time, but you're allowed a couple of assumptions as the spec directs you toward. Here are the numbers that we played with quite a bit last week, and these were just random numbers, but there were eight of them, and eight is almost always co-、uh, convenient because we can divide by two, divide by two, but in reality, and in P set three, you're not going to have the luxury of assuming that you're only going to have eight numbers, but this allows us to at least discuss them. And we looked at, again, a number of Algorithms, binary search, linear search, binary being the faster of the two. It was that divide and conquer strategy. Linear search was just left to right or right to left.、Um, but they were both correct, but one performs, of course, better. We looked at a couple of searches. And in、uh, English terms, how did bubble sort work? Anyone? If you implement bubble sort, how does it work? OK, a y good. So it compares two values that are adjacent to one another, and in short, if they're out of order, swap them, and then repeat, and then repeat, and then repeat, and then repeat. And at what point could Casey or anyone sorting n elements stop doing those comparisons? Did she, did she just need to walk across the stage once, comparing these two, these two, these two, these two, and by the end, done with bubble sort? Well, no, because remember in bubble sort, in the worst case, the person who's all the way at the end, if we had the number one completely in the wrong spot, he or she might only bubble up one place despite Casey's pass through the entire list of people. So Casey potentially had to go back and again and again and again,、uh, potentially n times. And that's where we got the n squared from. So, what about selection sort? This was the first version, and it was actually pretty intuitive, pretty consistent with what a normal human being would do. How do you define selection sort? Just in English. How do you, someone else? Anyway, yeah. So you find the lowest number and put it all the way to the left? Okay, so you find the lowest number and put it all the way to the left. Perfect. 
perfect. And then repeat, but you do it with the next smallest number and then the next smallest number. The problem with this, though, is clean and as intuitive as it is, it too involved just as much work. Because recall, if the list was completely backwards, number one is over there, number eight is over there, Casey would have to go all the way over here, find, oh, here's number one. Let me move him or her over here and just evict this person and just swap them over there because they're in random order in the first place. It doesn't matter if we just shove them to the end anyway. But now she has to repeat. And who knows where number two is? So you have to look again and again and again. And finally, we get n squared again because she has to make n traversals back and forth across the stage each time looking at potentially some n or n minus one or fewer. Humans. So, to see this in action, we can actually look at this visualization, which is a little,、uh, this shows us not just the ones we looked at, but a few others as well. So, this again, each of the bars represents a number. Smaller bar is smaller number. Big bar, big number. And in a moment, I'm going to click that green arrow at the top, and you'll see there's a few more sorts in this world than just selection sort, bubble sort,、uh, and merge sort, which we looked very briefly at at the end of the,、uh, last time. There's insertion sort, there's quick sort, there's shell sort, heap sort, a couple of which we'll come back to eventually, but there's dozens of these things. And really, it's the principle. Of just a few of them that we'll focus on for now. But the takeaway here is this、uh, I've clicked random order so that we've just kind of got some random numbers, small and big, in there. If I click go, what's neat about this visualization is it's going to show us more than three, it's going to show us all eight of these algorithms at once. And recall merge sort one last time, he's doing pretty well this time. Apparently, insertion sort's pretty good. Heap sort, quick sort, quick three, shell. I mean, maybe we should have started with these, right? Because these are clearly much higher performance, apparently. Here comes insertion sort. And there's n squared for you. So, as simple as selection sort was, and as intuitive as it was, and as correct as it was, it's clearly suboptimal, at least on random inputs. And we can do this again and again, but unless you get lucky, with, whereby maybe they're all sorted initially, those two algorithms in particular are going to perform and feel slower. And thus is n squared. So, hopefully, we can do better. Um, in fact, if,、uh, you might not have seen this a few years back,、uh, a certain someone was running for president, and he was actually asked this question of、uh, what, which of these various sorts would you use?、Uh, it's perhaps worth hammering home this point that n squared is indeed a little slow with this interview with former Google CEO Eric Schmidt. Whoops. Start at the beginning.、Um. Uh, yeah. now, now, Senator, you're here at Google, and I like to think of the presidency as a, as a job interview. <laughs> now, it's hard to get a job、right. as president,、right. and I mean, you're going through the rigors now. It's also hard to get a job at Google.、Right. We,、um, we have questions, and we ask our candidates questions, and、uh, this one is from Schw-、uh, Larry Schwimmer.、Okay. What, you guys think I'm kidding? It's right here. What is the most efficient way to sort a million 32 bit integers? Well,、uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I, I, I'm sorry. Maybe no, 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 no. I think, I, I, I think,、uh, I think the,、uh, the bubble sort would be the wrong way to go. <laughs>、uh, Come on. Who told him this? So there you have it. So today we'll look at one of these faster algorithms and sort of the principles that you can leverage in order to do better than bubble sort. But first, a few empowering techniques.